Hey there, in this video we are going to look at a special question type that goes over solving equations with multiple variables. So let's go ahead and take a look at what we do when we have an equation with multiple variables and we are given some um, different values and um, how we actually solve with inverse operations. So let's take a look at this first example. So we have a minus c equals a plus 6 times b plus a. And then we are given a and we are given the value of b and they want us to find c. So you can see here that c is not by itself. So we are going to have to do some inverse operations eventually. Um, but first things first, like we've done in some other uh, sample problems, we want to go ahead and plug in the A and the B that we do know. So negative three gets plugged in for A right here, and then we have minus C equals, in the parentheses, A plus six, so negative three plus six. Close the parentheses, and then we have B, which is four, plus A, which is negative three. So using our order of operations, we're going to do what's in the parentheses first, so these two pieces. So we have negative three minus C equals, negative three plus six is three. And this is multiplication in between here when there is no operation. So you can put a dot, you could put parentheses around both of these instead if you prefer. It's really up to you. And then four plus negative three is the same as four minus three, which is one. So we have negative three minus C equals three times one, which is just three. So then we want to go ahead and start to get C by itself. To get C by itself, we'll have to get negative C by itself first. So we'll add 3 to both sides in order to do that. When we add 3 to negative 3, that's 0. So we have negative C equals 3 plus 3, which is 6. Now, negative C is isolated, but positive C, or just C, is not. So we need to get rid of that negative by dividing by a negative 1. So C here is going to be 6 divided by negative 1, which is negative 6. So let's go ahead and approach number 2 in a similar fashion. So we see that we are given D equals E minus 5 times F plus 3. And then we go ahead and we take a look at we are given D equals 15 and E equals zero, and they want us to find F in this scenario. So again, F is not isolated, so we will have to do some inverse operations eventually. Just like on number one, we're going to go ahead and set up what we know. So we see D, which is 15, equals E minus five. So in the parentheses, we'll have zero minus five. And then in the second set of parentheses, we have F, which is unknown, plus three. So again, following those order of operations, we're going to go ahead and simplify what's in the parentheses. Now, we can't do anything with the F plus 3 right now. So we have 15 equals 0 minus 5 is negative 5 times F plus 3. Now, we're going to talk about two different ways you could solve this. So there's method 1, which we'll start with. And then we'll have method 2 over here. So I'll show you two ways quickly that you can solve this um, because for some people method one makes more sense, for some people method two makes more sense. So let's say I have this 15 equals negative five times F plus three. If we divide by negative five on both sides, that's going to get rid of that negative five in front of the parentheses and we'll have on the right side just F plus three. On the left side, we will divide by negative five to balance it out and that gives us negative three. And then from there, we are able to just get that F by itself by subtracting three from both sides. Negative three minus three is negative six. So we get F is equal to negative six in that example. Now, I do wanna point out if you had used method two, 15 equals negative five times F plus three, this is perfectly acceptable as well. And for some people, this makes more sense. They would distribute the negative five to the F and the three. So we would get 15 equals negative five F and negative five times three is negative 15. And then you're just solving um, basically like a two-step equation. So you would just add 15 to both sides to start to isolate this negative five F. That would cancel out the negative 15. We would have 30 equals negative five F. And then you would just divide both sides by negative five 
And when you do that, 30 divided by negative 5 is negative 6, so we still get negative 6 for f. So either way you get negative 6, it's just whatever your preference is. So let's go ahead and take a look at number 3. So with number 3, we have this equation right here. And with that equation, we are given the value of p, the value of q, and the value of r. And they want us to find the value of u. So we are going to start by plugging in what we know. So p is 2. So we'll have 2 to the fourth power minus 4 times q to the third power, which is negative 4 to the third power, plus 2 times r squared, which is negative 3 squared, and then plus u equals 300. Now notice anywhere I put um, a variable that was raised to an even power, um, if the base is negative, so in other words, if the number you're plugging in is negative, you have to have parentheses around it uh, for the even power ones. Technically, if this 4 wasn't here in front of this, I wouldn't technically need that uh, parentheses because it's an odd power here. If you don't want to remember the rules of when you do and when you don't need the parentheses, just always put parentheses. So you could put like here, um, the negative 4 to the third power, negative 3 to the second power. Anytime you have a variable to a power, if you don't want to remember when you do and don't need parentheses, just always put them and it won't ever hurt. So now we can go ahead and use our order of operations. There's nothing within parentheses that we can do. So then we move on to exponents. We can evaluate our exponents. So if you don't know these already, um, as I do them, then you're going to want to uh, make sure you do that multiplication off to the side. So 2 to the fourth power is 2 times 2 times 2 times 2, which comes out to be 16. Then we have minus 4 times negative 4 to the third power. That's negative 4 times negative 4 times negative 4. Negative 4 times negative 4 is 16 times negative 4 is negative 64. So here we're going to have negative 64 for this part right here times this negative 4 in front of it. Then we have plus 2 times negative 3 squared. Negative 3 squared is 9. And then plus u equals 300. So that's our exponent step. Then we move on to multiplication and division. So we can go ahead and multiply these together. And we can go ahead and multiply these together. So if you need to, you can always do 64 times 4 and then realize that a, a negative times a negative will become positive. And so you can sit here and do like 4 times 4 is 16, carry the 1, 4 times 6 is 24, and then add 1 and that's 25 and get 256 that way. Or if you are able to do it in your head, that's fine too. So plus 256. And then plus 2 times 9 is 18, and then we still have plus u equals 300. So now we want to go ahead and combine like terms over here on the left side. So when we do that, we do 16 plus 256 first, and that gives us 272. And then when we do 272 plus 18, we get 290. So 290 plus u equals 300. And then from there, we're just solving for u. And to solve for u, we're just going to subtract that 290 from both sides. And that gives us u equals 10 as our final answer. So again, just as a quick recap, we always want to plug in the values that you know. And then you're going to have to use inverse operations typically in these types of problems to get your unknown variable by itself. So remember the opposite of addition is subtraction. The opposite of multiplication is division and vice versa. Um, and just remember that your order of operations, your please excuse my dear Aunt Sally, or however you remember it, those are going to help you before you start to use inverse operations to just simplify the problem, and then you'll use those inverse operations to get the variable by itself.